Hi, I'm Dr. Matthew Norton, the founder of People Plus Purpose, and this is the Truth Behind Dentistry podcast. And today, my guest is Ren Menon. Ren is an accomplished entrepreneur with over 20 years of clear aligner industry experience, and he's the president and co-founder of OrthoFX. As the global head of product and innovation at Invisalign, he played a pivotal role in establishing the company as a category leader and oversaw the development and commercialization of every Invisalign innovation from 2004 to 2016. Ren's entrepreneurial spirit extends beyond orthodontics, including founding and scaling successful ventures in staffing, consumer tech, insurance tech, and medical devices. His leadership and passion for innovation make him a visionary entrepreneur and strategic leader. And based on the conversation we've been having before we started this, he also is a guy that likes to laugh and have fun. So welcome to the podcast, Ren. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Norton. Wow. I am very appreciative of you giving me time to allow me to come on this podcast. Looking forward to talking to you and hopefully laughing. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's my it's my honor. So so thank you for for giving your time to join us and 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 I I've been looking forward to it. I you've you've accomplished a lot of things. You've found kind of more recently uh this kind of a new home compared to you know, some of what you've been doing in the past, but let, I think a good place to start is kind of how did Ortho FX get started and, and maybe a little bit about the team that founded it. Let's, let's begin there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a great place to start. So Ortho FX was, uh, I left my previous employer in 2016 and then I am a nature outdoor person and I do a lot of walking meditations, Dr. Norton. So I think I walked around and a lot of thought was around what do I want to do next? And the thought that came to me over and over and over again was what can I do to improve orthodontics, the one industry that I know really well and what can I do to improve clear aligners? If you look at the world of clear aligner therapy today, the one word that, come, that came to my mind that continues to come to my mind is the word interruption. Mm. It is, uh, if you think about um, the interruption that it creates right from the screening process. A lot of general practitioner dentists do not screen for orthodontics. So mm -hmm. you need to interrupt the natural flow of an office to get screened. Mm -hmm. And then say that you screened, then, you know, getting financing approved is the next barrier. And then it goes on everything from the aligner itself. Um, you have to wear it for 22 hours for months that is a major lifestyle interruption. Mm -hmm. And then say that, say, you know, your treatment does not track. Then you have to go back all the way to the start, rescan the, your teeth, retreatment plan, remake the aligners, reship it to the office. You throw all the aligners away. And again, it's just plastic. And then you start the whole process again in between you're losing about two to three months. So it's a major interruption in a patient's life, the way it is working today. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's also a major interruption in a dentist's life. It is not dentists, as you know much more than I do, are not naturally uh, optimized for aligner therapy. The workflow is not optimized for aligner therapy. It's a one-off in many cases. And uh, the same is the case with many orthodontists, because that's why they carry multiple devices. So what I wanted to do was to turn this from uh, an interrupt-driven modality to something that seamlessly blends in and flows with your life. I wanted to make sure that life uninterrupted is our brand promise, and that's what we wanted to set out. That's what we set out to build. And once I was clear on what we needed to build, which is a next-generation device that, yes, does everything that an aligner is supposed to do, but with a lot more convenience, and also add value by providing additional things that an aligner does not do today, like providing health and wellness guidance. Since you are, you are, you know, your uh, your saliva is a is a it's it's a treasure trove of information. There are two fifty biomarkers there. So we wanted to evolve the aligner category into a next generation device. And in this journey. I was fortunate to partner with some of the originals who were part of building the foundational technology in this industry. My co-founder, Locke Fan, invented the aligner polymer. 
and is the inventor of the most used aligner polymer in the world today. My other co-founder, Henry Chan, developed a lot of the foundational software platforms that made this modality possible. And my third co-founder, Nicole Garcia, was the worldwide head of Philips or so Philips Oral Care. So uh, we came together uh, to make this change possible, make this change a reality in this industry. I love it when there's great collaborations, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, it kind of fits with what we were chatting about before and in terms of understanding the unique strengths and genius that each person brings to whatever they're doing. Indeed. And how they fit with their roles and but how they blend in a team. And I just I, I'm always inspired by, you know, how do people come together? How do they mm -hmm. find each other and come together as a team to bring their unique contributions? And some things would not happen if it wasn't for those unique collaborative assemblies of people so that's awesome yeah it's it's you know we we had the this is this the founding team and our our reliance on each other and our complementary skill set has been extremely beneficial and it's the cornerstone of our success so far so we have a shared common goal and we already have had have gone through the storming norming conforming and performing process of team building um, through our years of working together at uh, our previous employer. So uh, here we were able to just come together and continue to perform as opposed to restart. Nice. Uh, because we, have, we, have, we, know, we know each other and our families so well. That's great. That's perfect. So I know there were a couple of different driving force elements like in as far as unmet needs in that uh, that clear aligner category. So one of them you said is predictability and the other is patient compliance. So maybe you could speak to those being like key issues maybe that were creating part of this interrupt element that you were mentioning. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, predictability of outcomes is a number one need and the number one disappointment in the industry. Um, the way it works today is that say your, your treatment plan is visualized as you know, through uh, 3D software. And uh, incorporated into that software, into that treatment plan, is an expectation on the duration of the treatment and how teeth will progress. In a high majority of time, like about 80% of time, that is not how it ends up working out in reality. Mm. It ends up being um, it ends up being off from that plan. And then, you know, like I was uh, sharing earlier, uh, you need to go through the process all over again. This happens in about 70 to 80% of the cases. So lack of predictability is a critical unmet need. And then compliance is the other unmet need. These are correlated elements, as you can imagine, Dr. Right. Norton. Yes. Um, compliance is, uh, it's, it's not because of patient negligence alone. It's also because the aligners are, it, it hurts a lot the first few days, you know, so Sometimes uh, people are on a Tylenol diet the first few days that they are on an aligner. So people are inherently non-compliant. And uh, added to that, there are, there are some inconveniences that are caused in the form of pain by the existing devices. So these two contribute to a category that, again, you know, that is highly disruptive to the daily life of a patient and a dentist or, or an orthodontist. Yeah. And that's, I mean, it's important to be able to solve for those variables, right? Those issues. Otherwise you're just accepting that that's inherent, completely inherent in the game. And, but then you don't get, you can't get a solution. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's one way to, one way is uh, acceptance saying that, Hey, you know, this cannot be improved, but uh, we wanted to think differently. We wanted to make sure that this is not the accepted norm. We wanted to change the dialogue around this. So we knew the foundational uh, attribute that we needed to change was the force system that is moving teeth, i.e. the polymer or the aligner um, plastic that is moving the teeth. So we started on a very difficult, uh, risky, time-consuming, expensive journey mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. reimagine the polymer, at, which is at the very core of how teeth are moved today. So uh, our thesis was that if you can invent the polymer that generates the consistent uh, light forces. It won't require um, the a lot of the problems that are uh, that are 
coming that are stemming from these extreme forces caused by today's polymers will be solved. And then the other thought was, if we were to create a, a different way to stimulate the bone, we could be we could create an aligner system that people can forget to wear, i.e. they can be entirely non-compliant and there'll be an intentional design of that polymer. It is designed for forgetfulness. So yeah. we started uh, designing the polymer. It took five years and uh, four FDA reviews and studies and uh, our polymers were approved. Uh, and uh, were launched uh, in 2022. Uh, we have three polymer options, each going after the, uh, the attributes that you spoke about, predictability um, and uh, compliance. Um, our mainstay polymer, the polymer that's generating a lot of interest today is a polymer called Nighttime. This is the one and only polymer that is cleared by the FDA for nine to 12 hours of air. Okay, that was going to be one of the things I was going to ask you is what makes those that nighttime clear aligners kind of unique in the marketplace and and about the key innovations. So yeah, yeah. So yeah, so it's a very it's a different aligner altogether, Doctor Norton. It, the design itself is different. So you have an inner soft shell that fits your teeth perfectly. So that way, it tracks as the teeth start moving. That way, there's no lag between the aligner and the teeth. So it needs to fit perfectly. And then there's a, a harder outer shell, which is made with a different polymer. The inner shell is a certain polymer. The outer shell is a, shell is a different polymer. And in between, there's an air pocket. This aligner is bonded only at strategic points around with the air pocket acting as the mechanism that transmits the force and makes the adjustment. Say the teeth are not tracking. The air pocket is able to exert more pressure or less pressure. Think of you pressing a balloon. You know, it exerts a pressure at the point where it's pushing, where you're pushing it more, there's more mm -hmm. pressure there. So mm -hmm. the the design of the aligner itself is uh, is uh, significantly different. It's path breaking compared to what the rest of the aligners do. And it also has a unique manufacturing process. Um, we have about 150 patents around the design and the manufacturing of this aligner. Wow. wow. Congratulations on all that. I think that's, I mean, that's Thank a you. lot, that's a lot of advancement and progress in the amount of time that you've been working on this. And I think it made me think too, when we were just talking about like, what are we just accepting as reality built into something? It's like, I'll, I'll talk to a lot of people about, you know, as far as on the human side of things, and people often say that this or that is good you know, like the team is good, or I think our yeah. leadership is, or our hiring is, it's, you know, it's, it's good, but it, can it be better? I mean, are there still issues? Can we improve? And even if we felt like it was acceptable and, and part of what you're saying is some of these things were not really acceptable because it was running into th resistances that were going to keep you from being successful a lot of the yeah, time. Absolutely. I think, Every, I think that's a great point, Dr. Norton. I think, I, in my opinion, every innovation goes to multiple generations of evolution. So uh, taking the phone as an example, you know, it went from a wired phone to a wireless phone. But during the initial days, the phone looked very differently than the phone today. And the calls would drop all the time. Yes. And uh, your performance, I remember still the Sprint commercial saying, you know, we have the best coverage, your calls won't drop, fewer drop calls was a really valuable differentiator in their marketing pitches. Aligners are essentially there today. Aligners essentially are the world where there are drop calls and uh, the, the different brands are competing saying that we drop fewer calls as opposed to what should happen, which is rethink their device in a completely different frame to see how can we provide overwhelming value to the consumer and to the doctor and that's the journey that we are on. How can we rethink the device altogether? I like that too, designed for forgetfulness. Is I think that's yeah. how you said it, right? I think anything that could actually incorporate forgetfulness into their design, that's a that's a kind of a creative idea. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, IDEO, a uh, design, famous design firm in um, Palo Alto, uh, they are the they are behind that thought. You human centric design there. You are making your allowing humans to be humans. Uh, yeah, what a novel human. idea! <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> We're taking these kind of obvious things into account. That <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's it's like reinventing gravity. 
Yeah. You did it again, you know. <laughs> yeah. See, I knew we could have a little humor even in the midst of the aligner <laughs> conversation. This is good. So so tell me a little bit about so what sort of feedback are you getting? I mean, when you're when you're working with the doctors uh and the patients, what are they sharing with you about results? I think uh, in in case of patients, you can as you can imagine, they absolutely love it. Our net promoter score is ninety five, and uh, it's world class compared to any device or any category that's out there. Um, doctors like it for two reasons: one, they um, do not have to have; they can have an open, honest relationship with their patient. Otherwise, you, you have been as a practitioner, you know that they're not wearing the liner. It, you have to pretend this is all dishonesty that happens in that exchange. They can have honest exchanges. They can make corrections remotely using a technology that we have called rescue aligners. Plus, here's the best part. Patients are willing to pay up to $1,000 more for an aligner that they can wear um, that fits their lifestyle. So they're willing to pay. So more money per sale, fewer office visits, fewer disruptions, happier patients. Um, what more can you ask for? I'm, I'm sure you can ask for more and we are working on some more things, but in general, yeah. we are hearing great feedback and uh, our um, product uptake um, uh, in terms of number of users have been very strong also. That's great. I mean, that's just a consistent focus on what objections do we need to overcome? Where are we failing? But what objections do we need to overcome? And I think it also proves that, I mean, people want things, but sometimes they want other things more. Like I want yeah, that. Yes. What I really want more than that is so this, cool. right? I yes. don't want, and a lot of times we think it's just money. What you said proves that it's that money is not the only barrier. In fact, it's not even mm -hmm. the primary barrier uh, much of the time, right? I yes. think it's very good. Yes, and and that's so important in terms of product design, the stated needs and the latent needs. Mm. The key behind a good product design is discovering those latent needs that are unsaid, that they it's there but it's not like you know you're there they're so wired in the paradigm that they are operating in today that they cannot think of a different paradigm. You know, it's it's uh, it's. The, the whole problem with someone who's used to horses inventing a faster horse as opposed to a car. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. I remember being, it makes me think of a time I was at a, I was at a, uh, a conference and the speaker was saying that, was challenging the people in the audience saying that what you have is what you most want. And there was kind of this grumbling in the crowd, right? And, 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 somebody was saying, no, I mean, like, I want to find a spouse. I want to be married, for example. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he says, yeah, you may want that, but to the degree that you yet don't. And again, mm -hmm. this is, I, I think there's, you know, we could argue for this being overly simplified, but mm -hmm. I think the point is still there. He says, what you, there's something you want more, which is to not be uncomfortable going through a dating process. You Absolutely. Feel, so again, yeah. it's like, I want these benefits from an aligner, but I don't want to hurt. I don't want to have to go through that, or I yeah. don't want the risk that it's going to fail. Or yeah. so those are actually things I want more, right? Yes. I don't care yes. what price you make it. That still doesn't change those fundamental elements. Yes. And discovering those latent needs, that's actually well said, Dr. Norton, because finding those latent needs can be extremely challenging. And that's what we, in this case, our 20 years of experience working in the industry our collect team collectively has about 100 years of experience. So having diverse perspectives and having a background in the industry really helped in terms of um, teasing out those needs uh, that we started working on. It's not easy. No, no, I'm certain that it's not. So um, what else might you want to share before we wrap up? Anything that I didn't ask you or you didn't get a chance to say? Is there anything else that would add value to the conversation in terms of further understanding or application. Uh, yeah, yeah. What, one of the things that I felt um, that the brands in the industry were doing was selling a device and walking away. And uh, we tend to forget that uh, orthodontists and dentists, uh, they're small business owners, and they need a number of things beyond the device to make that device into a profitable business proposition. Mm -hmm. They need things like you know um, financing, following up on pending patients, marketing, all these needs are often left entirely to the device of the, the small business owner. And uh, I felt that our brand 
felt that that is not the way, the responsible way to serve uh, the provider community. So we have built an all-in-one solution where all these services are available to you. Uh, we have a platform called FX on track, uh, which uh, does remote monitoring. We have a platform called FX pay, which uh, can finance hundred percent of patients at uh, in some cases with no fee. Uh, and in general, what we have tried to do, Dr. Norton is to look at this problem holistically or the opportunity holistically, and then provide an all-in-one solution. This way, doctors can be doctors, they can be STEM majors, they can care for patients, as opposed to track down that the latest edit to the insurance claims that just came out from you know some uh, you know let's say Delta Dental. So those are that our promise is that we allow practitioners, dentists to be dentists. That way, they can provide awesome care to the patients and leave the rest to us. That's great. That's great. I think that's that's a valuable consideration and offerings that speak to that because it kind of goes back to what we were just talking about about barriers and mm -hmm. if it's the harder it has to be to get this to work or do I know how to make it happen in my practice then the less likely it is that people are going to be able to uh, influence others to engage right indeed, so, indeed. Yeah. indeed. Our, our hope is that we start this trend and then you know it'll be it'll become the norm that other brands cannot ignore, they will start providing all-in-one solutions as opposed to throw a device over the wall and then walk away. Mm -hmm. uh, great for margins, but not great for sustainable um, uh, competitive differentiation or not great for the community at all. Well, I like it. I like I like uh, all that you've shared. I like the the track that you're on in, in accomplishing all of this. So so good for you and Ortho FX for, for delivering on this. Uh, so for everybody who's who's kind of excited as they hear the conversation and say, well, I didn't even know about this or I, I heard of Ortho FX, but I just didn't know what all was possible. What's the best way for them to find out more as to how it might be, you know, something you can get involved in in their practice. Well, that'd be that'd be such a gift if, uh, for uh, anyone who's listening. So, uh, orthofx.com, you're on the web. Um, if you click on "I'm a uh, provider," the you can leave your information there. We're also on LinkedIn and Instagram and Facebook. You can also send a direct message to us. Uh, somebody will be in touch uh, within 24 hours, um, and uh, we'll take the uh, matters from there. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I, I, this is, I, I thoroughly enjoyed our conversation. It's been very nice to meet you and I thank you for your time coming on and, and just, and sharing. Right back. It's been a pleasure and honor. Thank you, Dr. Norton. Yeah. Well, thank you. So for everybody uh, watching, this is Matthew Norton, uh, the truth behind dentistry podcast. I've been with Ren Menon of ortho FX and uh, I, I know that you've enjoyed our time together. I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. And please subscribe if you have not done so already. And uh, hopefully share this with a friend. Thank you. We'll look forward to seeing you next time.